how we can model their transport uh, with hydrous. So, sensors, uh, active salute, uh, would actually have a surface active action uh, engine, and uh, what we call a surfactant. Surfactant are basically a schizophrenic molecule. They both like and don't like water. They have a hydrophilic head, and they have a hydrophobic head or body, and accordingly they are opposite an orientation at the surface, where the head in the water and the legs in the air. After a certain concentration, a critical concentration, they start to aggregate in the bulk solution. So this process uh, is eventually a result in reduction in interfacial or the surface tension. So for final discussion, when I say surface tension, I mean the surface tension at the uh, liquid gas interface. In our case, it's water and air. In the following, I will show how a uh, surfactant may affect the capillary pressure through two uh, physically based models. The first model is the young dupre uh, equation. It describes the mechanical equilibrium at the, in, at the three interfaces, <coughs> the, solid, uh, the liquid vapor interface, the solid vapor interface, and the solid liquid interface. Like I mentioned, this is the surface tension of uh, the surfactant. So basically, the lower the surface tension is, the lower will be the contact angle. And the contact angle may, and we'll see later how the contact angle may affect the capillary pressure. Based of, on some uh, previous study that I did, um, I came with this relation between surface tension and the cosine of the contact angle. What you can see here is measurement uh, uh, of the contact angle and uh, as function as surface tension. And this is the relation I uh, came with. And we incorporated this relation right now into the uh, And um, the next equation we are familiar with is the Young Laplace equation or the capillary equation. And here we have the uh, typical relations between surface tension and the contact tension. If we assume that we have reference soil or <laughs> reference liquid, when I say reference soil, I mean we have different contact tension. And we have a reference liquid, then we have different surface tension. So the index zero is referred to the reference soil and the index or reference liquid, and the index index one referred to our target soil or target solution. So these two terms are supposed to be equal, and therefore we can uh, come with this uh, scaling approach where can we can where we can scale our uh, target capillary pressure with a reference capillary pressure. So we're talking about the capillary pressure saturation relations and we can demonstrate it uh, um, here. So this is the Van der Noften equation in terms of uh, uh, saturation degree. This is our contact angle scaling and this is our surface tension scaling. If we assume now that the contact angle is equal or zero, then this term is one. And then if we have the surface tension of water here for this capillary pressure saturation relation, by simply changing the surface tension, we can reduce the capillary pressure. And therefore, we can even reduce it by more than 40%, 30% eh, in this case. If we assume that the surface tension uh, ratio here is one, meaning that uh, we are dealing only with water or only with uh, one solution, then we can have a, a soil, a reference soil with contact angle of zero, and then by increasing the contact angle, we're significantly uh, reducing the capillary pressure. So this is actually working. Here is some, again, previous result, result of mine where I measured the inhibition a uh, water retention curve for a uh, soil of different uh, hydrophobic nature. This is uh, our reference soil. I established this uh, reference soil by simply igniting the organic matter containing soil. And then I measured the inhibition curve for these soils. And then I was simply scaling it with the measured contact angle from the ratio of the capillary rise uh, of the reference soil and uh, the uh, target soil. This is also working. And so we have this scaling right now in hydros, 
In this context, we introduce another uh, scaling. I'm not going to talk about it today, but uh, it's basically show uh, the relation between the contact angle and the water content. But today I'm going to talk mostly about surfactant. So, we have this relation and it's working, but it's not enough because during unsaturated trans and water flow and solute transport, we have, at a certain time, we have capillary pressure distribution, <coughs> we have water content distribution, but we also have some uh, solute distribution. Now, the solutes are, uh, depend on the surfactant concentration, may affect the surface tension. Basically, we can describe, uh, describe three main uh, behavior of solution. Uh, simple salts will not affect the surface tension. Alcohol will show a certain uh, exponential decay, while, but surfactant will show uh, initial decrease and then there will be no more reduction in the uh, surface tension. <coughs> this point called the critical micellar concentration, the CMC. A previous study by Smith and Milham uh, show, used this equation to describe um, the uh, surface tension function of surfactant concentration, and most of their study was dealing with butanol, which is a simple alcohol. Uh, we introduce a new equation here, which also includes uh, the CFC, and it's much more flexible to describe other phenomena. For example, here, here we can uh, here is a phospholipid surfactant, look like this. And uh, it shows the typical behavior of the first domain where there is not enough absorption at the interface, so the first surface tension is not really affected, then a reduction, and then the CMC. We use this equation also to describe this, so it has a lot of flexibility to describe different behavior of different uh, surfactant. Next, uh, we have the viscosity of surfactant, which, which can be really uh, significant. You can see here again, for example, for the phospholipid, we have up to two fold higher uh, um, viscosity than water. And we can use this equation to describe the, the, the surfactant behavior, viscosity. So right now we have a solute transport dependent on dry properties. We have the Richards equation, the Van de Nuchten, Van de Nuchten one equation. We have the ADE, the direction dispersion equation for reactive transport, and we have our scaling procedure. So, water transport, solute transport goes through the scaling and then change the uh, uh, hydraulic properties of, um, of our soil. So, the other thing about our model is uh, basically we have a different equation here for surface tension and function of concentration. We also include contact angle as function of water content and surface tension and in the future we will include some more uh, uh, equations to describe the surfactant behavior. Uh, let's see some, exam uh, some simulation now. To describe that, the most uh, uh, easy way to describe the, the ability of the surfactant to change the uh, hydraulic properties is the so-called the closed column. We describe this initial condition for uh, water content. Uh, basically, the water content is equal in the two uh, domains. Here we have simply water, so there's no concentration of surfactant here, but here you have a certain initial concentration of surfactant. This is the hydraulic properties of uh, our soil and uh, the characteristic and the hydraulic conductivity. We use the relations for the phospholipid surfactant for surface tension and uh, viscosity. Those are different soils or the same soil? Same soil. Same soil. Same soil. It's the same soil, everything is the same, the same water content. So theoretically there should be no flow here, right? We have the same soil, the same water content, so it's the same capillary pressure. We have no capillary pressure gradient, so we are not supposed to see any water flow. Indeed. So if we assume, this is the first simulation, if you assume no effect of the surface tension, the contact angle also is the same, only viscosity is function of concentration now. What you can see that is actually we see the initial water content assigned as 
you can see the corresponding uh, uh, capillary pressure and um, you see the concentration, the initial concentration I'm missing the line here, so it goes like this and like this. And here we can actually see that our scaling uh, worked good. This is the scale hydraulic conductivity. It was scaled according to concentration of 0 0.6. And this is good, but there's no flow here. Let's take a look now at this uh, simulation. No effect of viscosity, no effect of contact angle, only effect of uh, 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 surfactant concentration. So what we can see here is the initial again surfactant concentration which is changing with time but what we, is more important to see here is the initial gradient developed at the very very first uh, time state. Okay? Uh, you can, what you see is the logarithmic, <coughs> logarithmic time scale. I'm presenting the result with this uh, order on a logarithmic time scale. So we have initial gradient developed at the interface and accordingly water started to move from one side to the other. You see the initial uh, water movement and then you see the fi final time that most of the water in this area moved to the uh, uh, surfactant free area. Okay? And this is the initial flux um, so we can uh, have a surfactant induced capillary pressure, gradient, and consecutively uh, water movement. In the next of the presentation, we'll show again uh, the, the combined effect of both uh, um, uh, surface tension, viscosity, without the uh, contact angle for the same time, for the same condition. No significant uh, effect of the viscosity, because the viscosity affecting only the hydraulic conductivity. So the main effect will be at the very first time and we have a higher flux here at the beginning, but equilibrium will be more or less the same like uh, without uh, the viscosity. So viscosity is affecting the hydraulic conductivity, so fractant is affecting more the gradients that are developed within the flow domain. If you look again at different times of the same simulation, uh, viscosity and uh, surface tension, we see that after 300 seconds, 1000 seconds, and up to 1 million seconds, Nothing happened. There's no difference. So apparently we have reached uh, equilibrium or steady state. But what I didn't tell you before that in the solute transport model I assigned dispersivity as one, but I did not account for diffusion. Now since we have a uh, solute here, and you can al already imagine that uh, when we have a higher concentration, then solute can be go can go also the other way. So here. Let's see for uh, the sensitivity of diffusion rather than diffusivity. So when the diffusion is zero, and uh, we take it for a long time, so we still get the same results. This is again the uh, capillary pressure and water content. So this is similar to the previous result. If we increase the diffusion coefficient, then we start to have here development of a quasi steady state uh, 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 of another constant pressure pair and uh, it's starting to, you start to see here that from the, uh, at the equilibrium time of the T4 water content starting to, uh, starting to decrease now this is one, one million second and we'll have to run it for a long time so just for the sensitivity analysis let's just increase the diffusion uh, coefficient it's not necessarily a realistic diffusion coefficient but it's uh, uh, will help us to understand what can happen through diffusion. So what you see is actually if you look at the water content at T4 we are going back or we are approaching our initial condition in terms of uh, water content and what really happened you see that we start to have a back diffusion uh, because of the higher concentration the solute moves uh, to the uh, solute free uh, um, side but we have a closed column so uh, solutes start to move from the, uh, uh, from the left side to the right side and then approaching this new equilibrium and consequently this uh, new uh, pressure distribution and uh, water content. So our future work 
and a future work we would like to include uh, additional empirical and or physically based equation to the hydrous 1D, and mainly uh, the effect of adsorption on contact angle through the Gibbs equation combined with the Young equation. And then we would like to include all this uh, um, uh, uh, model into the hydrous 3D after we finish here. We will incorporate it into the 2D uh, um, model. And the implication is not simply just for surfactant. I have now a study where I've studied root accident and also surface active and humic substances. And also dissolved organic material, and, but also commercial uh, surfactant, which are really starting to be used now for irrigation uh, in the hydrophobic soils or just to improve uh, uh, water distribution in, size, in some soil, in some soils. Uh, the root exudates and the rhizosphere, uh, this is a completely different <coughs> thing that was not really uh, explored it now, it started to recognize now, and uh, there's a lot going over there in a very small flow domain. So everything is very fast, as you see, 300 seconds, and the rhizosphere can actually regulate water uh, at the interface with the bulk soil. Uh, soil amendment with uh, recycled biosolid and organic soilless media, drip irrigation after we have the 2-3 uh, uh, D model will be significantly affected, I can tell you now, by uh, surfactant and evaporation and transpiration combined with drip irrigation. Uh, there will be also an effect on these uh, issues. Thank you for your attention. We have time for a question or two. No go. I think you, you, you consider the viscosity difference for the conductivity, right? Is there any other effect of the contact angle difference on the un unsaturated conductivity? What I mean is, you know, you, you, you consider the viscosity difference, right? Yeah. But the uh, conductivity, you know. The driving conductivity? The hydraulic conductivity will be mainly affected by viscosity. The but gradient... Is there any other effect? Direct effect? No. No. It's all indirect effect on the gradients. Mm -hmm. so, so all the effects you incorporate is the scale in the alpha, right, in our equations. The alpha, the alpha in the scaling, uh, in the hydroscaling uh, options. Yeah. 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 And conductivity. And the conductivity. Right. But, but the exponent in our equation n, uh, you, you then leave alone. You, 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 what you're saying there is the same. Right? <coughs> you're talking the alpha in the Van Gogh equation? In the equation, yeah. The alpha in the Van Gogh equation is, uh, I didn't show it here, I have several, several uh, uh, work about it, is uh, completely correlated linearly with uh, uh, the contact angle. Yeah. So if you, yeah. you, you draw the contact angle, normalized contact angle, to the normalized alpha in the Van Gogh-Newton equation, you get a linear line. I have a lot of measurement on this uh, yeah. issue. Yeah. But uh, what we modified here, or technically how you can modify the, the code to include this uh, uh, processes, is just uh, use the currently available scaling uh, procedure in Hydrus, and we into this uh, alpha or alpha star in the model, we uh, incorporate the salute response de dependent uh, uh, scaling. Yeah. So my question is really, if, and I don't know if you have experimental data, whether or not the exponent n also changes as a function of viscosity, surface tension, and so on. I don't know. Okay. No. But the whole, OK. So. There. Yeah. Here. Yeah. The entire uh, inhibition curve here. The entire is simply scaled by multiplying in this case by multiplying uh, this case. Now the correlation I found is between uh, the cosine of omega one and alpha. Yeah. Not this alpha. The alpha of the scaling. Yeah. So it's simply linear, but. You're scaling the entire curve, you're not, you, you don't, you can, I the effect of uh, N is not really. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Then thanks again, and we go to number two. And I think it's